Today, we are going to be painting the Scottish thistle. Now, there's a lot of different thistles. There's those really pretty blue ones that you see in wedding bouquets a lot, but that is not the one we're gonna paint today. Surprise, surprise, we're doing the Scottish one because I love everything Scottish. And we're actually gonna be doing a more loose style today. Um, when we, my husband and I did a 100 mile hike in Scotland, and we saw these all over the place and they're so pretty and I believe it's a flower of Scotland. So that's what we're gonna paint today. And like I said, we're gonna do more of a loose style. So this will be a lot quicker tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw. Now, here's a picture of a Scottish thistle and feel free to pull up one on your phone. Make sure you type in Scottish thistle, your phone or your computer. Otherwise, you're gonna get another kind of thistle. I mean, you can paint any thistle you want if you're doing the 31 day of flowers challenge, but today we're just going to be doing this one in the tutorial. So the first thing is it has this big round kind of bottom part, and then these two little curves, and then there's a lot of fluff up here. It's like purple fluff. <laughs> so that's the first one and we're kind of good just going to connect it here. We're going to make maybe another little one over here. Again it just has a round bottom, two little curves and then and this is going to be more of a loose style so we don't have to worry about it being perfect. And the leaves are really interesting. Let me pull those up while you guys draw. They're kind of spiky. Um, let's see. Okay, I found one. They're, yeah, they're really spiky. <laughs> so it looks like they have like a point here, almost like arugula, if you guys are familiar with that plant lettuce. I love arugula. So we're just going to do a couple of leaves here. And this is a really rough outline because we want to make this a loose painting. So we're gonna mix up some paint. Obviously there's a good amount of green here and it's a little bit of a muted green. So maybe add in a touch of red to mute it and maybe a little blue to give it that sagey color. I'm using sap green and then whatever the heck is over here for blue and this mess over here. I keep a messy palette. I know that bothers some people, but it's just the way I like to work. All right, so we have our brush loaded up and we are just going to, this is actually too dark, so I'm gonna use my eraser to pull up some of that. Okay, and I want this to look really loose and watered down, so I'm, have a clean brush full of water and I'm just placing that water painting it where the color is going to go on here a little bit up here and then when I grab the color I just poke it in and it just kind of bleeds around and you can help it move along okay and the stem is pretty thick, so I am going to kind of come down here, paint the stem, and grab my just water again, and do this one. And then grab my paint, dot, dot, dot. So technically this, would, this is a lot of wet on wet technique. And I want this to be more interesting than this, so I'm grabbing a darker shade of green to poke in, maybe add a little brown to it, and I'm just gonna poke it in. And sometimes the cool thing about watercolor is the experiment, experimentation part where you know we're gonna just let this dry and see what happens to it instead of trying to make it so perfect just exploring what it's gonna look like with this bleed um, and then hmm, let's see maybe add in a little more lighter yellowy green because we're not doing my typical style which is a lot of layering 
we're doing more of this loose wet on wet style we want to make it interest we just don't want to do one color we want to make it more interesting so if we poke in some of these other colors when it dries you're going to have kind of like shadowy areas there's a lot of water on this one maybe connect them so there's not a highlight in the middle all right now we're going to leave this because if we went ahead and did this purple right here the green because it's so wet is going to bleed like crazy in it and it's I mean, it's gonna be really, really blended and I, I don't want that look completely. So grab a little green and we are going to paint these guys. And I'm just going along my outline. These very pointy leaves. Beignet, don't bark. Sorry, my dog. Beignet. Okay, I have to shut the door really quick. Okay, so just we're continuing painting here. And we're using plenty of water because we want this, we are gonna poke in some more color. So maybe this time we grab a little more blue and a little more red to make it more muted, just poke in the color. Come down here on the stem. And we're just gonna let this dry because, or let's add in a little more color here, maybe a little more green, because it does look really muted. So if we just poke that in. Okay. We're gonna let this dry because if we like I said, if we just start painting purple up here, it's all gonna bleed together and we don't want it to be that loose. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back to it. All right, we're back to put that pretty little purple crown up here. And I'm, I'm using the same technique where I'm gonna grab some water and I'm just wetting the paper. So that wet on wet technique, make sure it's clean water. This has a little green in it, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna, I mean, I should have already had it mixed up, but I'm gonna make a purple color. This is a, I think this is magenta that I have here. The purple is kind of a pinky purple, but you can do whatever purple you want. Okay. All right, I'm gonna add a little more pink. Opera Rose, one of my favorite colors. And then I'm just getting that color and I'm poking it in up here. It's just gonna spread out. And since this is dry or almost completely dry, it's not gonna bleed in there. Cause if we did do this with this wet, it would just all bleed together, which I mean, you could do it like that. That's what's so cool about art is it's very, subjective so or I guess objective <laughs> you kind of can make it whatever you want <laughs> okay so we have this kind of puff ball up here but I want to make those little teeny spikes and how I'm going to do that is I'm grabbing my small brush this is a size zero and I'm going to grab that same color maybe darken it up just a bit and I'm going to just cut lines into it like this and do them like some go this way some go that way so it's interesting but it will all kind of bleed together since this is all wet and we're just doing that and you can alternate the color maybe you add a little more pink to some of these a little more purple all right, 
And since we love to make things look more interesting by adding different shades, I'm going to grab this darker purple and just lightly tap here. So it just adds a little, little something. And we're gonna do the same thing for this one. It's a lot smaller. Just painting our water, grabbing that purpley pink color and tapping it in. And then grabbing that smaller brush and making those really thin lines. And I'm just um, pulling down into the water. You could pull up, but um, I like the look of pulling it down. Actually, I go both ways, I guess. And of course, if you're working on a watercolor block, you can turn your paper. But since I have this tape down, I cannot turn my paper. And again, coming in here with that real dark purple and just putting a little bit on there so it's a little more interesting. Now, since the green part is all dry, we could go in and do a couple little details. We're not gonna do a ton of details because that's not what this style of painting is about. But I am going to put some little spikes in here. So just, I have my small detail brush again, and I'm going to mix up something that's greenish brown. Like that. I'm just gonna make these little spikes. Just like this. And some of them can come off of this side but just make sure that it kind of matches. So if these, you know, this area is lighter, so we're gonna make these a little more yellow. And then this area is darker, so we'll make ours a little darker over here. And they're just these little spikes going all the way up. Just literally making little lines everywhere. Maybe some of them are a little darker. that. Same over here. It's a funny looking little plant, but they're everywhere in Scotland. After we were done doing the 100 mile hike, we stayed in this hotel and the entire room had wallpaper with these all over it. It was really pretty. And we're going to grab a little bit of that darker color and just put a tiny shadow down here. When I say I'm doing a loose style, it's so hard for me to just stick with the loose style because I go back to my default, which is adding, you know, a little more detail, adding in some shadows. But for me, this is a loose style, I guess. Everybody's different. And I'm just going to do a couple little veins in the leaves. So grab a darker green and not too much water. So you can always tap your paintbrush on a paper towel if you have too much water on it. And then I'm just gonna make these little lines. All right. And there you have it, our little Scottish thistle. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial.